All right, mate, let's roll. It is my favorite day of the week. It is back day. But first, I'm having my breakfast, which I always have. You guys know I had the protein shake around 6 o'clock. And then a couple hours later, I'm having my six egg whites, four yolks. And it is cutting now time, so I've reduced cutting now time, so I've reduced my carbs. I was 106 at the peak of my bulk, and now I weighed myself 103.5. Oh, they're coming in. They're coming in. I don't hold a massive amount of body fat on my stomach. I hold my... Oh, I've got cramp in my abs then. Ah, oh, breathe. Um, yeah, I don't have much body fat on my stomach. I hold it mainly on my lower back. I mean, come on now. And my, and my legs. Oh, you want more? You want more? You want more of that? Oh. So I just said you have to lose that. For some reason, I don't have much on my stomach. We're all different. One of the most common questions I get asked a lot is, how do I lose fat on my abs? Unfortunately, we can't control where we lose fat. I can't be like, okay, I want to lose a bit of fat right here. You can't control that. We're all different. It'll come off us each differently at different times and we'll all hold it in different places. But that's enough of that. I'll make another video talking a little bit more about my cutting process. But for now, it is onto my eggs, a pint of water, and then my creatine. I don't take many supplements at all because I can't be consistent with them and there's no point unless you are. So I've only recently just started taking creatine and whey protein and then... BCAs sometimes when I train if I can remember to bring it but realistically there's no point taking creatine um, unless you're going to be consistent with it so yeah <laughs> oh <laughs> I'm still on the struggling eating <gasps> But it's all right, you just gotta get through it, you know? One bite at a time. Mm. Yeah, it doesn't taste good, but you know, like knowing that it's going to the games feels good. Mm. Mm. <laughs> oh, on oh, the way, on the way, on the way. One of the hardest bits about cutting is gotta be going from the bulk to a cut. Just kind of, and it's the same the other way around. Whenever I go to a cut to a bulk, I like, I don't want to lose the shreds. And now whenever I'm bulking to a cut, I don't want to lose the size. So whenever I get a tiny bit of that hunger feeling in my stomach, because obviously you've got to shrink your stomach back down. I just feel like I'm losing my gains constantly, but you got to override that. It's going to be okay. Because usually I have two pieces of brown bread with my eggs and my stomach's like, oh yeah, ready to go, you know, rocking it. But now it just feels, you know, I'm just missing something, you know, I just feel like I'm missing something in life. That's just how I feel. It's all about reducing it slowly as well. I mean, I've cut in bulk around 15 times now and I'm still learning my body and the best way to do it. That's why I love fitness. There's no finish, finish line. It's always a learning process. Um, but I just gradually drop out the carbs. Whenever I'm bulking, I'm literally having carbs with every single meal. Whenever I start the cutting process, I drop out one of the meals, one of the carbs in the meals um, at a time. And realistically, it's weird because I used to lose weight a lot faster. I think I'm like, what am I, six weeks in and I've only lost three kilos. But I like that, you know? Steady, don't lose the muscle mass, don't lose the strength. Try not to, do your best. Yeah. So many people count calories, and I mean, at the very beginning of my training, I did. But then I realized, why am I gonna count calories when I'm eating realistically the same foods pretty much every day? But like, I don't believe our bodies have, especially if you're not competing, we don't need to work on exact numbers. Because I've worked out in the beginning, and it's not, um, like it's sustainable to be counting your food every day. I couldn't imagine like putting in like calories for every single food, like walking around the shop being like, <laughs> could not do it, could not do it, will not do it. Do it once or twice, three, four times a week, a month, whatever a year. Learn the foods, what they roughly are, and then just memorize them because I've been doing it so long. I just roughly do it, you know, the same amount of size of chicken. But whenever I bulk, I don't need to count the calories. Let's just eat as much as I fucking can. So just getting warmed up. I always like to start getting warm with rows and lap pull downs, but preferably the exercise we're gonna be doing first. They just got a new machine in our gym, so we're gonna be using that, and that's assisted T-bar row. And the aim of the game is kind of like the arms workout that I posted recently, um, but we're gonna be doing four seconds down, a heavy weight for around six to eight reps. And then we're gonna lower the weight and then do around 10 reps um, with a faster tempo. Yeah.
looking for. Literally, that was going to be in like 10, 12 reps. Nope, I'm pushing for eight every time. Damn. Two sets down. Sweat dripping already. Woo! in my workouts. That's how you know you're working hard. On to exercise number two. Same principle as we did with the assisted T-bar. Doing the lap pull down now. Heavy, go four seconds eccentric, and then lowering the weight, and then doing 10 reps faster. I love how I'm controlling my breathing now. I like it, I like it, I like it. He's learning, he's learning. He's learning, baby. Session done, it doesn't mean we stop working hard, it just means that's the more intense bit of the workout. Because it is a lot focused, it does hit your arms, your biceps, and your forearms quite a lot. Now the next exercise we're gonna do, we're gonna take the rest of our arms and just do straight arm push down. Yes, they are involved, but there's no contraction of the bicep. Um, and they do, if you feel your tricep a little bit, don't worry. Um, that's just the connection of the tricep from the back of the shoulder to the tricep. down just to give my forearms and biceps a little rest and now straight back into the intensity so we're doing upper back row so instead of having our elbows tucked in focusing on our lats have our elbows up high we're gonna focus more on our upper back and then we're gonna be going straight into the machine next to it reverse grip pull down yeah this <laughs> <sighs> Knock me out! 
<laughs> when it comes to straps, I don't use them throughout the whole workout. I use them mainly towards the end when my grip starts going or I want to take the tension off my biceps. A lot of the time as well, I kind of make the, uh, the bar into like a fat grip. So I'll wrap it around my hand and just make it like a little bit thicker, the bar, you know? So I'm not actually using it for the strapping presses. I'm just making the bar a little bit thicker. But yeah, I do use them towards the end. Just whenever my grip starts going, and I can really just let it pull through there. And I can focus on pulling through my elbows. Because the hands, remember, from here to here, is all bicep, baby. Exercise. Um, I want to focus on growing my traps. So what I do it. Would it turn? Is start introducing them into the end of some of my workouts. I often do them on shoulders and back, but I'm just trying to hit them three or four times a week now. So last exercise: Olympic bar shrugs. Okay, I haven't, I said I was 103.5, didn't I? So I've lost 0.4 of a kilo. It's called steady progress. Ah, ah. You look lean, Do I? Your stomach is lean. Oh, thanks, bro. Yeah. Love right there. No, I just can't get enough of back. I'm sure I've said this before, but you know, back in the day when everybody started training. Back in the day. Back in the day, you even like that. You like that back in the day. Everybody out there was training chest. I was just doing back and biceps. It's always been my favorite day. Everybody has a muscle they prefer, and I prefer back just because I can get the mind to muscle connection like no other muscle group. And a lot of you guys always ask me on my Instagram, what is your training split? And I always mix it up, but I always keep structure. My current one right now is starting with GVT, which is 10 sets of 10 for every muscle group. And then week two will be supersets. And then week three is what we did today, which is um, really slow eccentrics, um, followed by pumping reps. Um, super sets high intensity. So week two and week three are kind of similar, but doesn't have the negatives like the second, like the third week. I just confuse you all. Either way, you have to watch it again to learn what I just said, so love it. That's my training split right now. And that's week threes, and I rotate that. So week one, week two, week three, and I'll just do week one, week two, week three, week one, week two, week three, week one, week two, week three, week two, week three, and just rotate that for around maybe up to 16 weeks, maybe a bit longer, and then I'll move it around and mix it up. But that's one of my favorite splits at the moment. Try it out. Hey guys, yeah, I hope you like this uh, workout video, all my other videos. As I say, I'm just trying to get back into the flow of things. But yeah, make sure you like, subscribe, comment. Y'all aren't commenting with any videos you want to see. I haven't seen any of that. So yeah, hit me up with videos that you want to see. Give me some, some ideas, you know? Some inspiration for some shit. Because all I got to talk about is the same stuff I always talk about. Because it's not hard to make gains. You just got to be consistent, baby!